is right after the game. Another difficult one, but you got over it in the end, and some good football played by Cavan in the second half, but you made it difficult for yourselves once again. Well, we did, because we didn't finish all the chances that we created, uh, which is probably a little bit unusual for us. Cavan is probably renowned for having scoring forwards, and we, today we didn't maybe took some of the wrong options, we didn't finish it out, we still probably kicked 13 points. It was a difficult day out there, there was, I mean, there was a very strong breeze blowing and it did affect the play because if you know it was kicking into the town end, it, it was very, very very hard to get scored down that end because the wind was pulling over the far side. Uh, it was a game we should have closed out, we didn't, we got the victory, I suppose two points is a league result, that's what you're after this end of the year. If we can cut down on the mistakes, I think someday we're going to give somebody a bit of a skin on. And is it, as I put the point to Ray Cullivan, they're, they're a fairly robust team and some of the players are very skillful like Patrick Horney and that Mark Burncombe, the guy in the forward line there. But overall they put in some stern challenges there. Are they more difficult to play against than the run the middle teams like Westmeath? Well perhaps uh, Cameron are smaller maybe than most in the county teams at the moment and they incline sometimes to take the ball into the tackle which suits the bigger teams and that's the thing they're going to have to learn not to do and to move the ball that little bit quicker. And as you did allude to, we did make a lot of mistakes in our passing and things like that, especially with our foot passing. The things we were just going to have to work on. Perhaps uh, we've been used to the safety of the hand pass game and we're trying to develop it on to move the ball quicker. And again, teams were dropping guys back. Now you have to learn to move the ball with your foot. So it maybe just it's a learning curve for someone. I did notice that uh, as opposed to the game in Mullingar last week when there was hand passes, 78, maybe a dozen of them between the 20 and the 45 and you were going back out and maybe lateral passes to the 45 metre line. The foot passing today, while they all didn't go to hand, they showed a bit of vision by the players and it's something that if you can inculcate that in the game together with the short passing, I'd say it'll, you'll have a better game. The game's all about adapting. You have to adapt to the side of the team that you're playing again. And when if, if, when everybody seems to be adapting to this, get 9, 10 back behind midfield and close it down. So the only way is to get the ball up there quicker. And if, if like the type of forwards we are playing inside, they're not big men, so the quality of the ball has to be better going to them. And that's probably where we have to work on. Sometimes we should keep them out of the areas rather than trying to kick it down to bodies and let them run on to it. It's this learning curve. Like, we're probably have a high turnover players. So we're a more settled team now at the moment. But they are, there's four or five new fellas out there. They're just finding their feet. Cavan supporters will be, have to be patient because listening to them in the stand, they weren't impressed with some of the performances in the first half and some of them talking about terrible football and all. But it's only February and players are really only getting fit and getting into their stride at this stage. Yeah, well again, I suppose people will allude to mistakes and they're simple mistakes and sometimes you can't legislate along the line for some of the mistakes people do when they have the ball in hand. I thought a full back line were excellent today. I thought they, they played very, very well as a unit. They have three fellas playing three new positions. I thought uh, Garone had a very, very good first half, especially when he moved into the middle of the park. I like, thought oh, Ray Cullivan. We had some good performances, but we just weren't insistent for the 70 minutes. And finally, particularly out in the midfield area, as you say, Ray did uh, play well, and um, particularly in the second half. And Porrick Riley did a lot of work, but seemed to fade a bit in the second half. Midfield is an area you still have to address, I suppose, and you brought on David Gibney. What is his fitness level like at the moment? Well, David, in fairness, probably hasn't really trained uh, since Christmas due to, to a back problem he's had. I mean, he, has, he didn't even, he actually turned his ankle in Westmead and he was unable to train this week, so that's why he's only been introduced for, for, for short periods until he gets back into the training programme. He has to go and get a specialised training programme due to his back problems. So, you know, I mean, it's going to really take him three or four weeks to, to even get back up to a little bit of fitness. And finally, Terry, when is the Under-21 campaign getting on the way? I know there's a lot of skillful players that will be involved in that, and that will probably be taken away from the senior campaign in the league. Well, the 16th of March, we're down to play for Manor. Uh, we have a nice team, as always, all right. There's some very, very good footballers, but you know, I mean, it, it's championship. That's the difference, is you're playing championship in March, and you go out, and you have, you have weather, you have elements, and you have to, it's all, it's knockout, so it's on the night. So hopefully, it'll be a proper good show again for Manor to get across it. Terry Highland, thank you very much for talking to me.